There's just something about a bright, sunny spring day. The air is fresh and full of life. The landscape, bursting with color, growing green and lush, and brimming with youthful vigor. And what could possibly make this lively vista even more captivating? Well, imagine with it a clear blue sky filled with gigantic, colorful balloons floating free and vibrant on nature's stunning backdrop. This is the picture of complete health. It's the very scene that will surely bring out the adventurous kid and anyone lucky enough to experience it. Okay, all right, back to reality. Now granted, here on the Northern Plains, we have beautiful scenery and nice spring days. But how many of them even begin to approach the colorful, sensational image we've just painted for you? Yeah, so how about the next best thing? There is a new project just launched at the University of North Dakota. It is for kids of varying ages. It requires nice spring days and a large balloon. And it appears to be generating a good bit of fun, excitement, and healthy competition. And best of all, it's raising students' zest for science to new heights. The North Dakota High Altitude Balloon Payload Competition is the brainchild of UND Space Studies professor Santosh Seelan. The original concept grew from discussions at a national high altitude balloon conference. The idea? To get kids involved with science by creating an opportunity to participate in a hands-on project. The next challenge? Exactly what would the kids be putting their hands on? Well. Anyone who's been a part of a high-altitude balloon launch will tell you it's not something you see every day. But that's only the beginning. Add the expertise of the UND Space Studies Department and the value of this endeavor begins to multiply. Add an interactive twist and the project becomes a competition with teams producing creatively designed payloads with purpose. With backing from the NASA Space Grant Consortium, the concept is sound and what was once just a vision is now reality. The result of considerable planning, effort, and teamwork. So this is just a, I think more of a fun thing for the students and um, they learn a lot in the process and uh, great teamwork. And um, um, I noticed some parents got involved and teachers were quite excited. With the competition headed firmly in the right direction, the project revealed yet another value. UND research assistant Katrina Jackson was tapped to lead the charge in getting the word out to North Dakota schools. Now, she did have a bit of support from her friends at UND Space Studies, but this was no small task. What it turned out to be was a terrific chance for a different kind of hands-on experience at a higher level. It was kind of a slow start last semester just because we weren't really sure how we wanted to go about this yet. and. Uh, what we wanted to do exactly. I made some YouTube videos describing the competition, got in touch with some local news stations and had them talk about the competition and Brad helped get everything up on the website telling everybody about the competition and then we just hoped to get as many responses as we could. One of the greatest challenges in this phase, meeting critical payload criteria. As students and teachers will tell you, it's a lot of work detailing purpose, design and production of these novel packages, but clearly there's one absolute essential. You've got to have imagination. Hello, I'm Jordan Betts, and I'm here in the name of science. It's a Yagi antenna. Some people refer to it as a, as a, uh, as a ray gun. We have uh, data loggers that'll do relative humidity, temperature, solar. The design. <laughs> it's very structurally sound. To say the payloads these students created were impressive is a colossal understatement. 
One team loaded their rather kitchen-esque housing with sophisticated video gear, including a transmitter and antenna package capable of sending real-time video back to Earth. Another provided a testing mechanism for some creative egg protection methods. And for a bit of contrast, they threw in a Geiger counter to test radiation levels in near space. Still others featured instruments for recording solar energy levels at high altitudes. And don't forget data loggers for temperature and pressure readings. When it comes to package design, inspiration shines. A dash of confidence doesn't hurt either. After all, how else could you send, among other things, a flying casserole, a lightweight pyramid, and something resembling Swiss cheese construction into near space and hope for valuable information in return? I like these type of projects because uh, they expose uh, students to the engineering design process where you start out with an idea and you end up with uh, data at the end. As the project moves forward, the effort required for success becomes clear. Information must be timely and accurate. There are travel and facility arrangements to juggle, not to mention the myriad of clerical issues surrounding the mission. It is quite another matter to be ready for what Mother Nature has in store. The weather is a major factor in any successful balloon launch. The bottom line, always have a plan B. In the case of this competition, that plan B was a vital key to a successful launch. Another was the flexibility of everyone involved. With a late April Bismarck launch foiled by rain, the shift was on, and a one-week delay which featured a flurry of real-time decision-making resulted in an exhilarating last-minute launch from an alternate site near Buxton, North Dakota. Right up to the release, strategies were shuffled to fit changing conditions until finally the skies revealed a perfect window and the 2012 payload train was headed for new heights. With a successful launch, the business of tracking moves to the top of the project list. As soon as the balloon is in the air, the scramble is on, and trackers hit the road following direction picked up from the UND payload. As the convoy moves to keep up with the balloon, teams anxiously await information, just itching for a glimpse of pictures and perhaps video from the ascending balloon. We are at just about 20,000 feet. 20,000 feet. 20, Patience is key. The process of tracking can be tricky, and it relies upon many factors, both in the sky and on the ground. True to form, this session was not without some tense moments. Location reports suddenly stopped coming when the balloon reached an altitude of 20,000 feet. There was one more packet at 37,000 feet. And then, silence. Lots of silence. Finally, Another message is received, now indicating the balloon was on descent, and for the trackers, a big sigh of relief. So there were some tense moments uh, during the chase, but, uh, but we had a good prediction. We still don't know um, exactly how high uh, the balloon went. Of course, if we were getting packets all the, back all the time, we could have seen roughly, at least within 10 seconds, when the balloon burst and the uh, packages started to descend. But uh, for some as yet unknown reason, uh, we stopped uh, receiving packets during the ascent. The chase now finds the convoy near the town of Brooks, Minnesota, some 50 miles northeast of the launch site. Suddenly, there's a clue in the distance. The UND group spots what looks like the payload train in a field. After gaining landowner permission to retrieve the package, they found it included only the tracking payload. The student payloads and the tracking gear had separated. The group is now faced with a much bigger task. Not only do they have to figure out why the gear had separated, they now must try to find the student payloads without the aid of a tracking mechanism. As launch day wears on, time and maybe a bit of luck would reveal more of the story. Later that day, a local farmer spotted the lost payload train 
As he put it, it was a close call. The farmer nearly plowed over what he thought was a pile of garbage, but opted for a closer look when he noticed the NASA stickers and American flag on one of the vessels. Now that the payloads were found, the questions of what really happened during the flight had a chance to be answered. Why did the payload train fall apart? Why did some packages fare better than others? And of course the big question, what data did we gather? Once back at UND, the remains of the payloads were separated and carefully returned to their respective teams. Once again, the competition heats up as teams evaluate results and submit their final reports. And then, the judges get the case. This project has been breaking new ground since it was only an idea. So why not do an awards ceremony with a high-tech twist? The red carpet for this get-together will be online with the host broadcast originating from UND Aerospace Network. Okay, Bob Robbie, tell them what they've won. Well, Dan, in the Best Lessons Learned category, it's Cavalier. Cavalier's your winner of $500. Congratulations, Cavalier. In the category for Best Craftsmanship, it's Mandan. Mandan, you're the winner of $500. Bismarck Schools, you're the winner in the Best Innovation category. That's $500 for the Bismarck Schools. Congratulations. In the category for Best Report, it's Northwood taking the prize. Northwood, you're the winner of $500. And now your grand prize winner, a winner of $2,000 in a UND Aerospace VIP visit and tour, it's Northwood. Congratulations, Northwood. You are our grand prize winner of the UND Space Studies High Altitude Balloon Competition. No matter how the awards are presented, it is a very safe bet. Everyone will value this experience. And just as the judges determined, all the teams are winners. They all come away with more skill in using the scientific method, and they will know the pronounced effort necessary to be a worthy competitor. But perhaps more importantly, they gain an understanding of how scientific projects unfold in the real world. And these young scholars might just be getting something they couldn't get any other way, a vivid look at what their future could hold. Now that this year's project is a part of history, there is a shared optimism about future events. Work is already in progress for a bigger and better competition next year. And as the saying goes, the sky is literally the limit. You know, there's a lot to be learned um, here, so absolutely I call this a success. Now the word will be out that uh, it was a great fun project and uh, I really hope there will be more students and schools participating next year. And uh, in fact, we are going to have a, a situation where we may not be able to put, put too many payloads, you know, five per balloon and maybe we'll have two or three or four launches at the most. So I would really like the schools to get uh, on board early and uh, come up with really good payloads and that's part of the purpose you know we keep improving every year so it's going to be competitive in the future so they need to be on top of it. Mm -hmm.